Every time someone mentions Tom Nook, the shop owner slash landlord in the Animal Crossing series, an argument comes up. Is he a small fuzzy capitalist manifestation of pure evil? Or, you know, not that. Nook made such an impression in the first Animal Crossing that he consistently appears on best villain lists alongside mass murderers like Sephiroth and Ganondorf. But some fans have a counter argument. Tom Nook sells a house to you, a total stranger, without even doing a credit check. He gives you a mortgage with no interest. His own creators insist that he is a great guy. But is he? Today we're going to examine the evidence and judge Tom Nook once and for all. Animal Crossing came out in Japan in 2001 for the N64 and a year later in the US for the GameCube. We start out on a train to our new town and immediately meet a Nook loyalist named Rover. Rover is appalled because we have nowhere to live and no plans, so he excuses himself to phone up Tom Nook. But we hear everything. That's right, Rover. Everything. Once we roll into town, Tom Nook takes us to his housing development full of what appear to be medieval dungeons. <laughs> Once we choose one of these torture chambers, Tom Nook reveals that we now owe him 19,800 bells, including fees and closing costs. None of this was mentioned up front. I would say if someone's not telling you how much it's going to cost, there's got to be another shoe that's going to drop. So it automatically feels very disgustful to me. <laughs> This is Sia Weaver, part of the Housing Justice for All Coalition, which advocates for tenants in the state of New York. Yes, I called an actual housing advocate to ask about my terrible landlord, by which I definitely mean Tom Nook. At the start of the game, the player only has 1,000 bells, and Nook immediately relieves us of the burden of having that money. As for the remaining balance, we'll have to pay that back over time. And Nook doesn't say when we have to pay him back. Except in this terrifying joke, haha! <laughs> this experience, in a nutshell, is why people hate Tom Nook. Suddenly, you're in debt, and if you've never played Animal Crossing before, you have no idea what one bell is worth, or how hard money is going to be to earn. It's not hard. This is a bad reputation Nook will never overcome. But in the grand scheme of things, 20,000 bells isn't all that much. A modern bed in Animal Crossing is 2,000 bells. So a house is just 10 beds. Which gets at why some people say that Tom Nook is doing us a favor. A cheap house with no pressure to pay it off? The man is basically a saint. Except that he immediately exploits that debt, makes you do a bunch of menial tasks, withholds your first paycheck, and then lays you off when he runs out of stuff for you to do. In OG Animal Crossing, Tom Nook is clearly established through his dialogue and his actions as a hilariously predatory hard ass whose deeds cry out for a strong union response. And the thing is, I wouldn't have it any other way. Because it is funny. No matter what you do, Tom Nook is making you squirm while he gets you with another loan. It's like adding a spritz of lemon to a sweet treat. It's part of the flavor of Animal Crossing. And it's delicious. Until you eat that cake for three meals, aka the next two games, which I'm going to brush over because I cannot stress enough, they are exactly the same. But in New Leaf, Nintendo really started trying to pull the wool sweater vest over our eyes. It began what I'm calling the nicening of Animal Crossing, a more precious paint job over the foul economy it created. The animals all used to be a tad more brusque. Nook called us lazy all the time, the snooty animals were really quite rude, and Mr. Rossetti screamed and called us names if we quit without saving. Maybe the most blatant sign of the nicening is the introduction of Isabel, your secretary. Why do you have a secretary? Well, you're the goddamn mayor now! Isabel is so sweet she takes her coffee with three spoonfuls of sugar, and she would never dream of being mean to you. How does Tom Nook fare under the nicening? Well, he's still got the town in a real estate stranglehold, that does not change, but he's not as snide as he used to be, and honestly just seems happy to be paid at all. He also doesn't pull a hire and fire on you because you're the mayor now, so... Yay! <laughs> New Horizons is, if anything, even nicer than New Leaf. Nook, for his part, is extraordinarily genial, in stark contrast to his earliest appearances. He appreciates you so much. 
The economy is diseased, arguably even more so, with the introduction of Nook Miles, a fake currency that you don't need except to pay off your tent in the beginning of the game. Except I also don't need to put a lighthouse on my island, but if you think I'm going to let ships simply break upon my rocky shores, you don't know me at all. Which brings me to what's actually changed the most about Animal Crossing. It's not just Tom Nook's attitude. It's the player's buy-in. And what I mean by that is the reason we're embarking on this whole adventure in the first place. We go from being a financially irresponsible free spirit, to a mistaken mayor, to someone who ostensibly willingly buys a ticket to a deserted island to build a home there. In the early days, we need to be suckered into this system like a dingus. But as the series matures, Tom Nook doesn't drag us in kicking and screaming. We want to escape with him. And in this new system that we opt into, where Nook appreciates us so much, is he still exploiting us? Absolutely! Want stairs? You pay for that. Want more residents on the island? You pay for their housing plots, Tom Nook gets the money when they buy a house, and you get a minuscule cut in his fake airline currency! That one is actually egregious. If the major employer is also the major landlord, you are going to be in a position of being exploited constantly. It's not freedom, you're just, prop you're just, everything is operating in like this weird world where he's making all the money. In a just world, Nook would never be in a position where he controls your access to information, to housing, and to the means to earn a living. Actually, we are fighting for a better world where you don't get stuck in these scenarios, and just because it exists doesn't mean that it's good. Nook is a bad guy, and that's why he's perfect for Animal Crossing. We need that tension and that friction in this otherwise perfect candy-colored world. And that's why, even though Nintendo seems determined to convince us that he's not a bad guy, most people don't want to be convinced. Once cancelled, always cancelled. You remember that, Tom Nook. That being said, it would be irresponsible of me to let him completely off the hook. So, if you're struggling with this bad landlord, or any bad landlord, Sia has some advice. The most important thing you can do is find a way to talk to your neighbors, even though that's a hard thing to do right now. So maybe setting up a WhatsApp group for your building or finding some way to communicate and uh, build build a community where you live is going to be really important if we're in a sustained period of being unable to pay the rent. 